Let us see the summary of the play Mother's Day written by J.B. Priestley. The play opens with Mrs. Pearson and Mrs. Fitzgerald sitting at a small table. Mrs. Fitzgerald has just predicted Mrs. Pearson's future. She exhorts Mrs. Pearson to stand up to her family and not let them treat her like a doormat. Mrs. Pearson responds that she loves them too much. even though they are selfish she says that she keeps dropping hints that mrs fitzgerald urges her to be more forceful mrs pearson is doubtful that she can do it also she does not know how to go about it mrs fitzgerald who knows some magic suggests that they exchange bodies she would then deal with mrs pearson's family mrs pearson seems bewildered but agrees to try it out both women sit across the table holding hands and staring at each other while mrs fitzgerald starts chanting they collapse but wake up again and having exchanged personalities mrs pearson now looks bold and confident while mrs fitzgerald seems nervous and unsure mrs pearson speaking like mrs fitzgerald claims that she can deal with the Pearson family. Mrs. Fitzgerald is alarmed that they might not be able to change back. Mrs. Pearson reassures Mrs. Fitzgerald advising her to go to her place for a while and then return to see how things are going. Mrs. Fitzgerald leaves and a confident looking Mrs. Pearson starts playing a game of cards at this point doris mrs pearson's daughter enters demanding that her mother iron her dress she is shocked when she sees the mother smoking but mrs pearson responds calmly that there is no law against smoking doris is even more startled when mrs pearson declares her intention to go out in the evening for a meal alone Doris then asks her mother for tea. When Mrs. Pearson says that there is no tea for Doris, Doris gets angry. <coughs> she grumbles that she worked all day and the least she can expect is tea. Mrs. Pearson retorts that Doris does not work half as hard as mother does at home. Annoyed, Doris again orders her mother to iron her yellow dress. as she plans to go out that evening with Charlie Spence. Mrs. Pearson proceeds to mock Charlie until Doris runs out crying. Mrs. Pearson's son, Cyril, enters the room. He curtly demands tea and inquires if Mrs. Pearson has put his things out. Mrs. Pearson calmly replies that she has not. and declares that she has decided not to do any such work anymore. Cyril is shocked and surprised at the change in his mother. Doris returns with red-rimmed eyes. As soon as Mrs. Pearson leaves the room to get herself a drink, the siblings start discussing their mother's unusual behavior. Doris wonders if she has suffered a concussion. Then they wonder what would happen if she behaves in the same manner towards their father. Mrs. Pearson re-enters with a bottle. When both children claim to be tired after working 8 hours a day, Mrs. Pearson says that she too has worked 8 hours. She then declares that she, like everyone else, will only work 40 hours a week and not on weekends. The siblings are alarmed. Cyril lives to make himself something to eat. Doris asks her mother if she is serious about not doing anything over the weekends. Mrs. Pearson says that she might do some cooking provided she is thanked for it. Mrs. Pearson even declares that she might go somewhere for the weekend. Doris is stunned and tries to gather more information. Mrs. Pearson retorts that she is older and able to handle herself better than Doris.
Doris is again reduced to tears when George Pearson, Mrs. Pearson's husband, enters the room. George conveys his displeasure on seeing Mrs. Pearson drinking. Mrs. Pearson's calm reply that she wants to drink amazes George further. He informs her that he will not have tea as he is going to his club and is annoyed when Mrs. Pearson tells him that there is no tea anyway. Mrs. Pearson ridicules him for being angry about the lack of something he does not want. She goes out to see how people at the club call him Pompey Ompey Pearson because he is so pompous. Cyril enters at this point with some food and George questions him about the nickname. Cyril admits that it is true and George leaves stunned. Cyril cites Mrs. Pearson for hurting his father's feelings. Mrs. Pearson responds angrily that Cyril's opinion did not matter. After all, all he did was spend too much time and money on races and the like. At this moment, Mrs. Fitzgerald, who is really Mrs. Pearson, returns to the house. Mrs. Pearson rebukes Cyril for his rude behavior towards Mrs. Fitzgerald and Cyril lives in a huff. Mrs. Fitzgerald asks Mrs. Pearson how things are going now. The latter assures the former that soon the family will respect Mrs. Pearson. George returns. He raves about being called Pompey Ompey Pearson and complains about Doris sobbing upstairs. Mrs. Pearson tells George to behave himself in front of guests, but George loses his temper and asks if Mrs. Pearson has lost her mind and even declares that she might be drunk. Much to George's bewilderment, Mrs. Fitzgerald gets upset on hearing all this. Doris returns to the room and is annoyed when Mrs. Fitzgerald asks about her friend. But Mrs. Pearson orders her to speak respectfully or leave the room. Things get into quite a tangle with George, Doris, Mrs. Pearson and Mrs. Fitzgerald all talking and Mrs. Fitzgerald trying to defend the Pearson family. Suddenly, Mrs. Fitzgerald gets up and asks everyone to leave her and Mrs. Pearson alone. Mrs. Fitzgerald now pleads with Mrs. Pearson that they should switch back to their original personalities because the Pearson family seemed to have had enough. As before, the two women link hands while chanting. When it is done, the two women again regain their authentic personalities. Mrs. Fitzgerald advises Mrs. Pearson not to be lenient and not to apologize or things would be back to square one. Mrs. Fitzgerald suggests that they should test this and ask Mrs. Pearson what she wants to do that evening. The family is called back in and they walk in looking apprehensively at Mrs. Pearson. Mrs. Pearson tells them that they will all have a family game of rummy and then children would make supper while the parents chat. George and Cyril agree but Doris hesitates provoking a sharp query from Mrs. Pearson. Doris hastily agrees. Mrs. Fitzgerald leaves as the family gathers around Mrs. Pearson. Thank you.